welcome to Flory Models Live. Here we are with you, three o'clock on Friday, the 3rd of April, 2020. Another successful week confined to the table, <laughs> which is no different from any other day for me. But there we go. Anyway, <laughs> back with us is our very own Andy. How are you feeling today, mate? Uh, much better, thank you. Um, still got a cough, bit of a temperature, but yeah, so... But apparently now I've got another week's off, week off because I've still got a bit of a temperature, but hey, away it goes. But as soon as we're still at work, I'm a week behind everybody else because I was at work for the first week of isolation. Yes. And so I've only been in isolation for a week and it's driving me batty. Proper. See, and I've had one week, so God knows what everyone else who's had two weeks is doing. Yes, I think it's going to be a few more weeks yet. I can't yeah. what they're going to do let us all out the end of the, on one day it's going to be like school's out after <laughs> isn't it that's it for summer holidays everybody's out ah! that's uh, that, I don't think it's quite going to be like that but anyway Nathan you all right I'm, I'm all right yeah I'm week two of isolation I'm hanging in there Very it's good. getting a bit samey samey though isn't it that's it I'm in week 5482 <laughs> of self-isolation being here but yes, uh, but uh, nice t-shirt by the way. Thank you. I'm getting ready to film a little bit this evening, so I've had a shave as well. Oh look! <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're doing hair and makeup next, all be good. <laughs> right. Well, usual thing, guys. What we're going to do is um, we'll have a look round at your great work that's going on at the end of the show. I've done a gallery one as well, so we can see what you guys have all been up to throughout the week. Um, we'll do a little bit of building. My plan of action really is to uh, deck all the uh, buccaneers this afternoon as we're doing all your questions and things like that. I might even try and get another coat of primer onto this just to make that go down as well i'm sure the guys will be doing up to lots and bits and pieces down there as well usual thing if you've got any questions please post them up do not take it personally if it bounces back and we don't answer it it either means we're just busy or just post it up again and we'll see it again but as you say the chats move so quick it's a little bit difficult to keep up Big thank you, obviously, to uh, Pramjit yesterday uh, being on with me and Matt on last night's live show. I know lots of you are on there. You're also saying great interview with Pramjit and everything else. Yes, bless him. He's a little star, I must admit. He really sort of relaxed into it. He was a little bit terrified, I think, at the beginning of the show. But by the end of it, it's gone really well. Um, hopefully, we spoke, obviously, after we came off air as well. So, he, like he said, he's still got so much more to talk about. Lots and lots of things to go in depth with about how the actual system works, the production, and obviously, for his point, of view with the design and stuff like that so as we said on the show we're going to get him back in as well so give it a week or two he'll come back on for another Thursday night and we'll do exactly the same with version two uh, and he can go in a little bit more in depth about how they go through the processes of it and things like that and he can find out a few little bits of information as well uh, to pass on to us from FX for the things he doesn't know so that's the plan with that one but big thank you to everybody who was uh, commenting and posting up and of course I won't really waterboard him because I'm pretty sure the nipple clamps will make get him talking very much ahead so we know what's going to be released next so that's what that is about but it, it was a joke honestly some people anyway all good lovely to have you guys all in live chat i see we've got lots of you in there this afternoon as always you lovely people all down in there say they're all saying nice t-shirt very good so fantastic job so what we're going to do we'll have a quick look around at your work now then we do on for a bit and then we can do questions throughout the afternoon as we make our way through with that one so get your questions all ready remember if you've got any photos and stuff like that if we cannot keep posting them up because apparently it's spamming the site the forum and obviously if people don't put the right code in and it turns into eight miles of I don't know, binary code, whatever it is it's doing on there. Um, so, you know, if you want to do photos to show on the show, please post them in the forum under today. Put it under Friday, as you can see it in the window here on the Friday show, and you can see it in there. So post them up down the bottom in here. I think there's one in already. There we go. So uh, Lee's down in there just saying, just about to finish his matchbox build. Uh, so yes, so if you've got any pictures, post it up in here and we can find them in the bottom of the today page uh, just down in there. So that's the plan really for that one and for today. So cool. Dennis, Dennis say, is saying that he's got more Mustangs than Nathan has Tornado models. Didn't we have another Dennis from Germany who had loads of F-16s? Something. A few years ago. I think so, yes. Yeah, that yeah. was about. I seem to remember him posting a picture of his... Uh, a stash, stash full of just f-16s hundreds. and stuff yes i yeah, recall like that as well 10 of one different type and yeah all the way through yeah yeah but. thing is i used to say i used to be guilty of it because before i did this 
uh, when I used to do the commission work and stuff, I used to have a lot of Tom Cats phantoms in my stash as well. So I was like that person you see where they've got the same box but a pile of 10 of them. Uh, because again, I used to see them in bargains, you know, and on sale. So I'd buy a load of them because I'd always be using them. So, and that wasn't like the F-18 days. Well, I just had piles of them. So for that, but as I say, generally the other stuff, because that was my bread and butter uh, kits of what I used to like to work with. But now it's quite a mismatch of everything I've got. Mm. I've got a few of, yeah, the same types of aircraft, but in different kits. Like, you yeah, know, F-18s, I think I've probably got about four now. I've probably had about 10 at one time. I think the only kit I can think of that I've got done, I haven't. Lightnings, I've probably got about four of each of the different 48th ones. Mm -hmm. I've got about 10, what were the cheap things that I um, jet built? Prob <laughs> jet Provost, yeah, I've probably got about 10, 10 jet Provost. Oh, well, you were something. emptying out Audi for them, weren't you? Yeah. 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 I've got great plans with them, but I bought a decal sheet, then Matt had the decal sheet off me, and I've never got it back off him, so it's not been able to build any. Um, and then I've got two um, Revel Was he jammed? Me? So, yeah, you froze for you a You froze second. then, right at the critical moment. You've there we are, two, two Revel Revel Rafales. I've got oh, right. the, most of the, everything else you've got is all singles on. I've got not multiples of anything really, but not like Nathan. Yeah. Uh, get Andy to see if he can 3D print the drag chute. What, somebody needs a drag chute. Can you 3D print one? 3D print drag chute? If you can send me the CAD over, I'll... It's the CAD bit that's the hard part, hard part, not this 3D printing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but um, it was a good art thing. So the guys are posting down in here saying it was great to have uh, Pranjit on the show. Absolutely. No problem. Our pleasure as always. So we'll get him over for part two of that one. Right, should we have a quick look round to see how we're doing? So we've got a couple of finishers on the old uh, Corona desk. Uh, where are we, Web? There we go. Okay, so first up, we've got a Matchbox Chinook done by Rob. Look at that. See, that came out all right. Very nice indeed. Yeah, it's all right, that Nick. What do you think, guys? Cracking. I saw that. Was really nice. It's a horrendous kit, so he's he's saying it's the worst kit. <laughs> so yes, very good. Okay, we got Hell Diver. There we go. That's a classic Matchbox kit. That was good box art, if I remember rightly, for that one. Mm. They do look good ones. Those, I know those blues are really awkward to work with. But it is. Yeah. Yeah. They look it looks really good that yeah looks nice and worn that's it yeah nice paintwork with faded the blues in and mm. yeah. let's say it's not an easy color to work with at all so yes very good congratulations on that one okay what else we got we've got uh a sea fox Ooh. so this is from james little sea fox crikey <laughs> Look, it's almost got a closed-in canopy. It's like somebody <laughs> stuck a, looks like a sidecar <laughs> top on the back of it, you know. Very nice. Yeah, side-speed silver looks spot on. Yeah. yeah. Weird-looking thing, isn't it? Very yes. good. I'd say it's nice because most of these you'd probably never see, would you? Okay, no. P12. Yeah, yeah Classic P12. Yeah. Okay, it's by Mark. Very nice. Nice to see on the stand as well in the yellow look. Fantastic. Spot on. Bit of rigging as well. I was going to say, he's got the rigging on there. Very nice. And he's even got the decal look on the actual stand. That's what that's for. Is that, I going to say, is that's what it says at the bottom? I've never known that. <laughs> but yeah, he has. Is that's what you're supposed to do with it? All those ones oh, I've never done. Every day, then. Congratulations. Okay, we've got a 262 done by Kenny. Yes. Oh, look in flight striking and he's done it as well perhaps what that's what something we should have done oh, <laughs> for all these years who knew? yeah I never knew that looks good very good really nice yeah like it's one. amazing you know as you say recessed panel lines in those days that must be a nightmare for tooling mm. 
Okay, Swordfish, 1974, done by Adrian. Look at that. It's all right. Mm -hmm. That is a good job. That's an awkward kit, that one. Yeah. Rigged as well. Absolutely. Proper nice job on that one. That's very good. Good old Swordfish. Nice finish. It is. Very nice finish, because that's a horrible kit. It's an awful kit. Again, it kit. just goes to show how well, you know, you guys are doing on this and taking it in the thing. See, he's got his up here, look. All those wasted opportunities to use that decal. Yeah, that's it. See, look, he's got it on the side. You could have it on the side bit as well, look, all around the front. Oh, God, look, see, so many options. Very nice. Cool work. Good job on that one. Top job. Uh, what else we got? A Hawker Sidley. The mystery. Is this the one that wasn't painted? Oh, yeah, yeah it's the one that wasn't painted. So yeah, yeah, we did see yeah. that one. There we go. That's the proper airfix way of doing it. Declan straight yeah. onto the plastic. That's how I remember it as a kid. Perfect. But you okay. get no silver in. And we'll just do the last one because obviously it's in here. It's from Lee and he did the DC-7. This looks awful. Just it's not a strange place. scale, is it? No, what? not at all. Oh, look at that. It's tiny. Oh. Teeny tiny. Look at that. That's brilliant. That is class. I very like that. nice. That's very class, that. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like it a lot. Very cool. Teeny tiny. It is diddy, isn't it? Like that. And uh, yeah, nice pictures. It is. Prop blur that actually works. Prop it? blur that works out in daylight, look. That's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. In that scale, it works, isn't it? You try that yeah. on a 24 scale, it'll look like, yeah, it won't work. <laughs> so, yes. Very good then, guys. Congratulations on that. What we'll do is we'll pop around and have a look at, obviously, all the rest of it a little bit later on. So cool work. Let me just zip to the top round here. There we go. All good. Sorted. Right. So my plan of action. I'll tell you what. I'll brief you on first of what's going on. Don't forget uh, up on the site right now is uh, where is it? Where we go back to web. Uh, I've got a thing around here somewhere. Hold on. Where are we? Go vlog. Do, 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 do. Up today with you is uh, part eight of the actual um, uh, MiG-23 build. So this is really all about going through the decaling process uh, of how we went around getting these to go down, which wasn't so straightforward, took a little bit of uh, playing with. And then obviously we give it a gloss coat right the way over before we came in with the weathering and stuff like that. So that is up with you right now. You can go off and see that one that is there. And then that looks something like, hold on, I have got me up, have I got me up? Oh my Lord, I'm so out of sync. I do apologize. I haven't even got my cameras on, hold on. Talk about yourselves. <sighs> Camera's all coming online. Okay, let's have another camera. That's both for them. <sighs> it's all right, seamless. Nobody will ever know. I was busy doing orders this morning. Okay, there we go. And this is how she looks now. So to be honest with you, I've just painted in the actual uh, tip lights uh, and all the rest of it. So they need to be weathered in now. So I've just given them a bit of black oil right over the top, both sides, just so I can weather those in. We've got the actual chin camera don't know quite what it is tracker system on the front underneath there so that one is in but there you go she's all oiled in and weathered in now and like i was saying to matt earlier what i need to do is get it sorted so i need to bend the acrylic which i was going to do today but unfortunately i've run out of time so it does then all going to go into here like this so she'll be in flight because the thing is next up and i've got them all somewhere there they are We've got all the pylons and everything. I've got to go on this and obviously a weapons fit. But because it all stands out down the bottom, I can't put this down with weapons on it. So I need to get it mounted on the stand before we add all the photo etch because there's photo etch to go on this yet. Uh, and the bits and pieces. But I need to get it mounted uh, in flight before we actually tackle that problem. And as I say, I'm still waiting for my pilot to rack up. But as soon as I've got it mounted up in flight, then I'll put all the photo etch on afterwards because that'll be a lot easier than trying to do it right now. So yes, there goes the engine nozzle. So yes. Very nice. Coming along, we're getting there. Look, it's all removable parts. Rob says on the um, in chat says Phil, I've ordered Mr. Primer from Matt. What ratio prime to thinners do you recommend? Uh, Thanks, Nathan, for the link on Facebook this morning to your tornado build. I have the GR4, F3, and Desert Babe to build. Might give one a go when, once I finish the current 109. Very good. Um, as for ratios, I would say I usually start at 60, 
so 40 60 so 40 percent primer 60 percent thinners you're always going to go slightly on the thinner side uh, unless you're really trying to do some filling work as well at the same time but if you're using it as a primer i would say 60 percent thinners 40 percent the actual surface primer and to be honest i've got a batch knocked up ready to go now because i've got two half pots of it so really what i've done is, is just fudge it a bit across so it's all sat and ready because i am lazy and i can just tip it and go um, but yes very it, it's one of those things where put down the first coat let that get a key let it bite in let it dry and then go over it with a wet coat afterwards and it comes in silky smooth and very very nice and to be honest it's on here so that's going so that needs another coat and then we'll be good to go on that one very nice indeed right the guys are all saying fantastic interview last night it was sorry uh says hi lads great show last night uh in the 60s uh russians used uh, to buy airfix kits in the uk for the info and the instructions and then return the model okay hmm. uh last night was great uh looking good great looking mig thank you hi everybody uh, i've just started with the sr71 for the CV19 build. Uh, problem is the wing tips are warped like hell. Any tips on correcting them? Um, gluing it solid won't help. Uh, it returns to the warp, warp shape. What scale is it? Is that the 48th one or the 72nd? Is that the old testers one? Because the wing tips on that, I remember them being separate in there. But as I say, I thought they were quite a solid bit. I don't know if you could actually probably just bend them around isn't probably going to do it the trouble when you're dealing with plastic it's not something where you get a lot of people and they're like heat it up because if you change the molecular structure of the plastic it goes to like jelly and it will never go back to how it was resins a little bit the same way as soon as it reaches temperature it goes uh, but if you get the warm water trick you can almost manipulate it but plastic doesn't tend to do it it tends to bounce back so there's no real easy way with warping plastic back into shape that's the trouble. Uh, so yes. Dennis is asking um, the MIG paint scheme. Is it airbrushed or all or some decals? No, it's all airbrushed. Mm -hmm. Dennis. Into into. What's so, that? What? It's, oh it's yeah, it's all decal. Yeah, completely. De not. It's no decals at all. It's all hand painted. Hi. It's not the first of April anymore. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, she is all decals. Almost. There is a few little touch-ins. But um, all I've done is I've blended the decal line. So you just literally pop along. And then because obviously I caused overspray onto the tiger stripes, you just literally come along with a mild airbrush cleaner acrylic and just give it a rub. And that'll take the lacquer off. And that way it gives you a nice clean ones in there. But no, she's all right. She'll be fine. Nice little bit of weathering. We went in with the oils the other day. We did it live. Finished it off yesterday. So she's all quite happy of how it's turning out. But as I say, look even better when we get the missile racks all on it and everything. There's a bit of photo etch to go on it as well. But as I say, I don't want to do it because I can't put it down. So as soon as you put it down, it's going to snap it off. Because these are all resin. Which are a little bit of a nightmare to deal with. So, yes. Don't really want to be messing too much around with those. Any tips for deckling a buccaneer? Start at one and finish at 550. Oh, is it? Is it literally like that? Is it that good? <laughs> Hold on. I'm sure there's a, a deckling chart here somewhere. I just can't seem to find it. Um, um. There's a few questions for Nathan in chat. There. Not about the t-shirts, is it? couple back t-shirts and a couple about tornado kits the t-shirts I need I'm just checking on off screen now I need to put them back on they're on the tornado sig website but at the moment they're not they're not on there so I need to work out why um, so. it's, a, it's a tornado sig t-shirt yeah so it's a custom we it's kind of on the website and it it's company called Spreadshirt but all the designs are not on there at the moment so maybe next week I'll get a couple back up uh, what's the other question down there so I'm just trying to find me sheet here it is <sighs> me decal placement so it'd be one two miss a few 99 and it's done yeah 
Gary's asking what is a good um, seven second tornado kit. The best um, ground to that one is the Ravel one. Um, in its various guises. Um, for an F3, you're better off with the Hasegawa one if you can get it. The Tamiya one is the Italeri one. And, but that's, not, it, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it says, is there any known issues to look out for? No, not really. Um, it's a fairly straightforward build, to be honest. You should be all right with that. Again, um, have I got one? I don't think I've got one. No, I don't remember it being particularly tricky at all. That is tornado questions, I think it is, isn't it? Well, if you're going to get the Rebel um, ground attack one, go second hand because the newer releases I tend to find the canopies were a bit rough, a bit worn out maybe on the mould. So if you get the older ones, you'd be better off, I think. And Chris has got the Airfix Tornado. It would be a good one for the COVID build because it's raised panel lines it's a little bit ancient yes just a little it's a classic it so is. that's a bit of a weird one because airfix don't build don't do in-service aircraft yeah that would have been in service when they did it wasn't it mm. yeah i think that um like Pramjit said last night that they do world war ii and cold war stuff so I'm still holding up a little bit of hope that now it's left service might do something with the tornado kits. And yeah. Like, whether they, you can do a GR1, GR4, all in the same box in. To be honest with you, when you do think about it, because, you know, now I'm thinking, uh, you think they did the Jaguar yeah. and then they did the Harriers. They were all in service at the time. They did the FA2 when it would have been just coming out. They were yeah. straight on with it with that one. Um, yeah. You know, so they did do stuff that was in service as well, but I think it, the world was a little bit different then. You know, I think it's probably got a little bit like Ramdu was saying last night. It's a bit more difficult to get access to um, research. Yeah, I think maybe the RAF have tightened up an awful lot with letting people crawl all over aeroplanes and measure them. And yes, and I mean the. We, on the Tornado thing years ago, we did a base visit. Mm -hmm. um, they let us into the cockpit of a GR4 that they use for weapons loading training. Yeah. And just remember, one of the things, the, it was a navigator that took us around the aircraft. He had to jump in the cockpit really quick and double check there was nothing um, secret in there. Yeah. There's nothing and he, he had a quick look around the cockpit he was happy that there was no sort of secret parts inside it and then he let us in it but yeah. they wouldn't let us anywhere near a, 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 GR, a live sort of gr4 yeah even then that was 15 squadron the ocu at the time mm. so i think that's again that's part of it maybe that even though the gr4 was 30 years well, yeah, the GR4 wasn't. Even though the Tornado was 30 years old, there was still a lot of new bits in it they didn't want people seeing. No, that's right. And I bet, um, I don't know, I mean, I, 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 I mention it every time I see them to do a Tornado. <laughs> but I'm yeah. sure it will come. It will come eventually. It's, whether it's this year or five years down the line, I don't know. But it'd be nice to get a little bit of competition to the Rebel kit in 72. I was going to uh, mute myself to do a bit of spray while you okay, okay. carry on with chat, Nath. The same thing is, I think, you know, to the layman, as we look into a cockpit, probably wouldn't see anything anyway. Yeah. You know, it's like all, all the secrety bits and all things like that. But I suppose at the end of the day, they don't know who's looking in. That's the thing. You no, know? I think the secret stuff was connected to the weapons. Hmm. As they were firing the latest weapons at the end, weren't the brimstones and stuff? Yeah, that's right. That, 
I just remember going in this GR4 and there was a panel, I can't remember if it's to the left or the right hand side, roughly where your elbows were, where they used to have cassettes yeah. for recording the flights and mm-hmm. there was a big there was a big hole there and there was a few holes in the cockpit elsewhere and I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder what goes there. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's all the gubbins inside them. They were brand new and probably on the Typhoon now and they just don't want people having a nosy, I suspect. Well, the thing is as well that some of the um with the aircraft they get digital upgrades so they used to have the old-fashioned tapes back in the day wasn't it yeah um whereas now it's digital yeah Uh, so some of the loading points where it used to be in the cockpit because it used to be i think it was the jaguar and the tornado both had the old big and it was literally like a cassette player wasn't it they used to plug it down and in and then transfer the data into the aircraft which would take a while but now, I think most of them, they all had sort of upgrades a bit more digital then and was probably put on somewhere else on the aircraft. Yeah. You know, remember, another, another access hatch somewhere. I mean, one of the bits that was quite interesting, we went in the operations planning room. Yeah. And they showed us the, the digital map of the UK that mm-hmm. they used to plan. And it was a, the amount of detail they had on that map was just amazing. Hmm. But in the corner of the room was something the size of like a fridge, hmm. and that's the old computer. Yeah. Old mission planning because yeah. the yeah. instrument that's at the unit had a, a canister of film in it, and it used to spin around, and that was the moving map. It was literally like a slideshow projector. Yeah. So I think the tornado has got, well, had some amazing sort of upgrades and some. It went from really early computer chips like the 70s era right mm. up to modern day all in one very old airframe we've got tons and tons of questions popped up for a second um chris has got his airfix tornado as part of a double with the the lancaster for the 617 squadron i'd say build it but just just be ready for a sort of early 80s style build yes if the shape's right it's okay it, it'd be a really good one to turn into a super early tornado because they've got the really early weapons and fuel tanks with it what else have we got the movie gary said he's built the 32 scale rebel kit and he's enjoyed it and he, yeah that's a nice little kit do they just have to set up LiDAR on the fence line and the perimeter track and measure as they taxi past? <laughs> Chris has suggested you just set the LiDAR up on the fence. I imagine mm-hmm. the RAF police might have something to say. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yes, me, officer, sir, it's what, all right, honest. Come this way, sir. <laughs> yes, can we have a chat? <laughs> Does Andy mute so we don't hear he hasn't got his extractor on? Yeah, absolutely. This is it. He He's doesn't even spray it. towards it. He's <laughs> not got it on. It's all right. It's fine for his cough. Oh, he can hear us, look. <laughs> Let me just stick a couple of these on. Jen saying he really enjoyed last night's show. I said I did as well. That was brilliant. And yeah. I think there's a question earlier on about if we can have a tour of their um, head office. And we asked that yeah. after the show had finished. And he was like, there's no way. No <laughs> not Imagine we'd be looking at every screen and then plus having a proper like, oh, <laughs> what are they working on? Yes, no, we did ask, but as he, yeah. he did, you know, obviously they don't, like he even said, they don't have anybody there at all. It's not just personal to us. He says they have a policy of no one goes in there. So, like, all right, okay. It was worth a try. <laughs> don't ask, you don't get in there. <laughs> Chris was at the Avalon Air Show last year. There was an M1A1 of the Australian Army showed his ID as an Australian Army cadet officer and he wasn't even allowed to climb up onto it. Hmm. And then at the Edinburgh Air Show in South Australia, as an RAF Atlas was there, showed his um, Royal Air Force Association badge but wasn't wasn't allowed to even look in the back. Some of them though, and, and being honest, it's not so much security, but there's been um, in the UK definitely a few high profile incidents where members of the public have been inside aircraft, famously with a Merlin, where the um, emergency exit door fell off because they'd had people in the back of the helicopter and somebody had undone it. The crew didn't check it. And then as it flew off and departed, it banked over and the door fell off. 
So, but, and that was a bit, that's where it was like, right, that's it. We're not having Joe Public in the back of the, the aircraft anymore. And I think that some of it isn't so much the security. They're not being horrible. It's just that from, you know, safety more than security point of view. I think that's where they're getting at, you know. Because some of the stuff we've done as groups, you know, when we've been to playing with the Chinooks and that, um, and obviously when we've been up playing with the Hawks at Valley and that, we've had very good access into pretty much everything. But even I've noticed over the last five, you know, 10 years, the access is getting more and more restricted to see what you can do. And a lot of it is, is health and safety has gone mad, you know? Mm. And I think that's more a case of, or akin of what's really going on. So Yeah. I think Graham Robinson said he was at a show here in Canada. The tornadoes were on their way back home and showed up at a show. The pilot let him sit in the cockpit, but no pictures. Same with the victor at the same show. So if that's the victor, that dates it, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. So even a couple, what, a decade or so ago, they were a bit fun, funny about pictures of the cockpit. It's got to be something to do with the weapons systems. Um, that's all I can think of. Also, don't forget, sitting in the cockpit, you do have to think FOD, because if you sit in the cockpit and you're just Joe Public, and that's just assume 20p falls out of your pocket, if it goes under that ejector seat, they've got to take the seat out. Yeah, that's the point. I remember saying, he was saying, that's another, that reminds me, he said, when somebody dropped a, a bolt, it took them three hours. Yeah, oh yeah. Three hours to strip a load of bits out to find this thing that had been dropped in the bottom of the cockpit. Yeah, because obviously they can't do. And I must admit, I have been privileged enough to sit in quite a few cockpits over the years, and it's always the big question, right, clean out your pockets before you get in. That's always mm. been the golden rule, and I've always done it as well. So if I've gone in there, I will literally just take the camera and even that, I have it wrist strapped around my hand in case I drop it because I'm paranoid about some poor schmuck's got to take a whole ejector seat out. And in some aircraft, that's the canopy as well has got to come off, you know, yeah. just to get into it. So, you know, as I say, I don't want to be causing the crew just for me getting a bit of a quick sitting and all the rest of it, causing hours and hours and hours of work, you know. And Chris is going to build his airfix kit, his tornado. <laughs> <coughs> Do it. Do it and do it as a prop. Do it as a tornado just into service with a, a light aircraft grey underside. Yes, there's a challenge, and then you can put all the weird weapons that Airfix have given you the kit on. <laughs> right, here we go. Where are we? Gary, he said, as a fire crew at a civil airfield, is regularly allowed to sit in Pumas, Apaches, Merlins, etc. Always checked if there's anything I shouldn't photograph, and always told, nah, go for it. In the Apache, they even let him wear the monocle and demonstrate his use. Cool. <laughs> he said, and Chris, they said, pilots have been losing pens for over 100 years. Yeah. <laughs> Line is going mental, I bet they do. Yeah. Because that's like early early finish that evening's knocked on the head of Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What about the seats? Are they safe to just sit on? <clears throat> that's... um. Yeah, they are, because they, obviously they have arming pins, which... Yeah. secure and lock everything so even if you pulled on the handle nothing will happen not when it's pinned in place but it's always just a worry that you know like they always say if they even if a pilot drops a pen if he's taxiing out many a time they come back in because if he's got to find the pen and he needs to get out of the aircraft to find the pen because if it gets in the mechanism underneath and god forbid that's assume it gets wedged in an area and you're pulling on when you need it and you can't get out you know so yes definitely one of those ones where best to be safe especially with a few high profile ejections a couple of years ago wasn't it that I do weren't, know that weren't exactly brilliant no so i used to have a friend who who was the president of the british aircraft preservation council there's a mouthful and he said ejector seats were a horrendous problem for museums hmm. as they'd have they've got rockets in them yeah mm. and they they were really really dangerous to museums so they had to put an awful lot of care into decommissioning ejector seats um christopher said he worked at an air show on ch-53s and an elderly gentleman down the ramp and hit the ground hard e that hurt. Mm. You know, I know for a fact, I've um, got a, a friend of mine I speak to a lot. He was a maintainer uh, on the old Prowlers 
uh, when they mm. were doing those. He's retired now. And one of his final jobs was when the Prowlers were, um, you know, basically loaned, because they're never given, but loaned to museums, he used to go along and do the decommissioning work. So we would spend weeks decommissioning because they would fly them in, but then obviously mm. all the equipment, as in the safety and survival equipment, has to come out of the aircraft because it can't be left with them in, including, as you say, the rocket motors for the seats and all the bits and pieces. So the aircraft is safe just to be there. They've obviously had all the very expensive equipment out before it goes to the museum, but a lot of the times they go there pretty much complete, then have to be stripped in situ. So that's something where obviously the museum cover helped cover the costs as well when that happens. So... Yeah. They are full of quite dangerous things and radio. There's lots of chemicals, yeah, radioactive yeah. stuff. Yes. The, the problem with like that chap falling down the ramp, it just the, the life we're living now is you just have lawsuits and lawsuits into and yeah, yeah, they get mm. shot, won't they? My mum years, well, I mean, decades ago, I, I was very, very young. The um, territorial army were putting a display on. And apparently the blanks that they used to use had compressed cardboard in the end. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and she got um, hit in the face with one. It took took her front two teeth out yeah. and cut, cut all the top lip. And I said, did you sue them? I think. She said, no, no, no. You know, it was one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays you get... Oh, yeah, that's it. No, yeah, that's it. No win, no fee. <laughs> that's madness, isn't it? Dan said when he was in Iraq, he wasn't allowed anywhere near the Apaches. But as a civvy, he did a few deliveries to UK Apache in Middle Wallet. And he was he was allowed and given a tour and got to sit in one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, it's that operational thing, isn't it? If, it's, if something happens while it's... Operational, on, yeah. on the ramp and it's, you know, the one to take it out and then it's an aircraft down into it. It's... In the factory being... <laughs> Mind you, it's like, you know, when we've done things with Odium and that, we've looked at, like, their... their uh, better not say what it is. They have a, an aircraft there that's on alert all the time, and we all got to see it in it, and it was like, Jesus, don't break anything. Because this <laughs> yeah. is actually the alert one. So it's like, <laughs> please do not break anything. So it's like, yeah, no, no, we'll be fine, honestly. But uh, you mm -hmm. can tell they get very antsy with, you know, a load of civvies crawling all over these aircraft, especially when they're on alert, so they're all ready to go, you know? But, uh, unfortunately, as you say, I think most of it isn't so much people being funny. I think a lot of it is just health and safety. You know, these days, I think the military is one of the worst places for it these days. You know, if you go back to, you know, 80s and early 90s, health and safety was sort of you know a bit of a pastime but now everything has to be done by the book all the rules have to be followed so i think if they you know you suddenly have bits and pieces going on or people crawling over aircraft and losing bits and all the rest of it it's all no can't do that anymore yeah richard says when i was a youth and eight squadron uh, an open day saw that off of an engine fire extinguisher on one of the Shackletons. Yeah. Oops. I suppose at least it was an engine fire extinguisher, not a cabin fire extinguisher. <laughs> it's still not going to be popular. <laughs> no. Adrian said he had to empty all his pockets when he sat in a Spitfire at Biggin Hill. Yeah. I imagine bits could drop into all. I was going right to say, yeah, if you ever look down on a Spitfire, it's just, yeah, <laughs> cables and bits all under your feet, isn't it? Yeah, and he says, thanks for our remarks on his swordfish build. It's all right, good job on that. And Tim said that Project Spitfire is featured on the Airfix workbench. Ooh. I do like the workbench blog, it's definitely worth yes. a read. Well, I've also been to work before and got to work and think, where's that apple uh, Sure, I bought out the house with me. <laughs> and the following day, I'm walk, walk, driving to work and then break, and then all of a sudden, there's an apple underneath <laughs> my foot pedals. I think, ah, that's where my apple went. I was yeah. driving a lorry once, many years ago, and I'm going along the M5, and I can smell burning. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's burning. That's just not a hot smell. Uh, and with that, there's smoke coming up from like the center cubby where the engine is underneath. 
So anyway, I pull over on the hard shoulder, get the fire extinguisher out, ready to blast it. Um, and I'm looking and it's not massive. There's, I can't see any flames through the grill or underneath the, the cab or anything else like that. So I open it up and what it was, one of the lads had put his pasty on the manifold to keep it warm. <laughs> he forgot about it. I drove off. So two hours into the trip now, we've now cooked his pasty quite well and now incinerated it. And that's what the smoke was coming from as I was driving along. So I was like, Jesus Christ. I thought that could only kill me. Cold Lord Evan. <laughs> <laughs> right, Paul Lister asked a question a while ago. We'll go off track a little bit. Can anyone join the Tornado Sig Japian Archimus member? Anyone can join. And okay, and he said, Can you join without doing Facebook? It doesn't do Facebook. We had a forum, but it got killed off by the photo bucket. Yeah. The lava, and we went from 40 or 50 posts a week down to one or two and there's there's tons going on on facebook for modelers absolutely tons and my i know facebook has got many detractors a lot of things wrong with it but if you create a facebook profile tell it nothing tell it you're 99 and you live in alaska and join the, oh, there's so much modeling stuff on facebook and it's the tornado sig for instance gets Oh, crikey, 10 posts a day. And it's free to join. I think there's a couple of questions you've got to answer, but nothing beyond that. But I think if you give Facebook some weird, fake, made-up information, use it very selectively just for modelling. Don't join and make friends with family and all, all that sort of stuff. I think it's a shame to lose out on such a great modelling resource. Mm. No, it isn't. It is. And he, I mean, now Facebook tracks you and it does targeted ads, but you can, Facebook only knows what you tell it. So if you're a member of the Tornado Facebook thing, yeah. does that mean you're a member of the Tornado Sick? Yeah. So that means I'm a member of Tornado Sick without even knowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you find it on Facebook? If you just um, go to tornadosick.com, there's links there. There's also links to the forum. If you're really not happy with Facebook, you can join that. But you're going to be like um, one bean rattling around in a very empty tin. You're not going to get very much interaction from people. I know there's a lot of busybodies and there's a lot of negativity about Facebook. But if you don't put it on your phone, just log on, you know, on your computer. And if, use you it. if you're selective of what you go on to and view and, and become a member of, then it's not too bad, is it? It's, it's when you share all your information, then you start to get lots of rubbish and stuff on there. But And just politely ignore or decline any friend requests and just box yourself into a corner of it. But we use it, when I run six, running a forum is an absolute nightmare, to be honest. It's a lot of work. You can't upload photographs. You can't do what So that's why we use Facebook, because it's all taken care of. I don't have to do any GDPR compliance because if I run a forum, I'm collecting personal information on people. Facebook takes care of all that for me. So that's why everything went Facebook um, a couple of years ago because it, it just does the whole lot for us. We don't have to manage it really. It just sort of ticks along it's nicely. Switch the heater off, it's cooking my leg. Right, the question. Uh, the colour of Mr. Surfacer 1000 matches the colour of Edward's PE cockpit panels for the Desert Babe. Oh, there you go. He days. Must nice <laughs> <to> remember. <laughs> I think the cockpit. Got Edard colours. Oh my god. They're funny sometimes, aren't they? I'll put a link up to the Tornado Sig. Facebook. Mm. Richard yeah. said when I worked on the F101, there was no mention of personal safety in any of the manuals. All the cautions and notes were about keeping uh, keeping the aircraft safe. Our times change. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right. So my problem is now is that clearly the numbering goes under the fuel tank because when you look at it on here. Obviously, it hasn't got the slipper tank on the, the, the drawing for the positioning of the, the numbering. 
So I'm going to have to try and work out now how the seven, that would be on there, how that would relate to the others. Bugger. Uh, got the tank on. So because we got the tanks on, we're going to have to cut the decal to be able to fit. Ah. That's a pain. So... Where's me calipers? We'll just work this out. Piece of cake, this. This is part of modelling, everyone. <laughs> okay, so that will be there. And if that was running down the inside of the let's give it a bit of room and say there. So what we were looking at then is coming down the side of the two. Ugh, okay, so it's going to be down the side of the two. In there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Don't panic, Mr. Mannerin. Okay, let's get rid of that. So we're going to swing this so that sits to there. We're going to swing this so it sits to there. So we know we're square ish, as long as the decal doesn't move. Look, you're all waiting for this to fall apart and go horrendously wrong. I know, I know what you lot are like. <laughs> are you doing it wheels up? Yeah. No, no, it's going to be geared down. I didn't bother. <laughs> yeah. Just chop it off randomly and leave it. Right, okay. Well, we're going to go, I would say, so I'm going to say, let's just try it here. The tension belts. We need some music to go with Yeah, this, that's but... it. I think I'd have been pulling the pylon off. And... Yeah, we well, ain't going to pull that pylon off because I've actually put it That's properly the in tank. there. Yeah. That ain't yeah. going right. anywhere. Yeah. Uh. Right, so what we have to assume now is is that this bit is just going to hang out the edge. <clears throat> Tension's palpable, people. And then you need to cut a bit out of the middle to make it... Well, the thing is, it's only going to have a little bit on the other side. So what's going to happen is, I'm thinking... Let's see how it goes. It goes very near the front, down off the back of the axis of those. So the X... It needs sky spots when you've got this. Well, this is it. Two, seven... <laughs> Do you know what? I think the seven could have come across in theory. So we'll, we'll break it up into minis. Yeah, let's see. Better than sky sport this. Yeah. Speaking of which, is there a Grand Prix on this weekend? <laughs> There's a virtual one, I think. Yeah, it's a virtual one. <laughs> Quite enjoyed it last the other weekend. What the virtual one? Yeah, strangely enough. <laughs> gonna be about three Grand Prix this season at this rate, isn't there? Definitely gonna be a bit odd, isn't it? I bet the airshow season's gonna just not happen at all this year though. All this talk about sitting in cockpits and going inside atlases and stuff reminded me there's no react. Hmm. So we got a nice post from Fairly said he's hi guys, many thanks for all the great tips you give. He's made a weathering error on his typhoon prop, cleaned it off and used Mr. Colour lacquers and rapid thinners for the first time. Prime, silver upcoat, white tips followed by yellow, and then painted tire black, all in less than thirty minutes. What a result. <laughs> How many left one, two about five layers of paint in thirty minutes, that's good going. Chris says virtual question mark interesting. Be better than the it, real F1, isn't it? It was do you know at the time when when I was watching it, it was almost as though you were watching the real thing. Did yeah. you watch it at all, Phil? Uh, to be honest, I didn't. I saw a little bit of a replay on it on the internet. After it had happened with Johnny Herbert trying to keep on the track. Which is quite amusing. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could tell the ones that were either either young and used to playing video games or played it, played, you know, did that video game because some of them were proper virtual, yeah, per virtual drivers, people, weren't they? they? Yeah, but then, like you said, the, the Johnny Herberts who were all middle aged men and <laughs> totally outclassed, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris, so the actual drivers drive. There are some 
I think there was a couple of Formula One drivers who were driving now that were on it. There was some old Formula driver, well, Formula One drivers like um, Johnny Herbert. Isn't the clerk on it this um, week or something? And then there was some. It was like Chris. Was it Chris Hewitt? He was the McLaren driver as well when he was doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, there was the Olympian, wasn't there? Chris Hewitt, who is it? Chris yeah. Hewitt. He was in it. Um, there's some esport people. Um, then there was just some normal c- celebrities. <laughs> is that what you call them? <laughs> yeah. Is it Ben Stokes the cricketers on it this weekend? Oh uh, yeah, Rob said Ben Stokes and the Claire on this weekend. Yeah. Lando Norris is doing a lot of sim racing. Yeah, Lando Norris was supposed to be do, do, was meant to done really well, but he had um, problems with his internet connection. I think. Yeah, that was it. That's what the, when I was watching it, that was the problem. He was having internet tr- issues. Yeah. See, it looks good until they come off the track, and then you're yes. like, okay, now you can see it's virtual. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Max Verstappen's on it. But he's on a different sim. Max Verstappen. <laughs> it would be interesting to see a virtual F1 with the current driver lineup on it. Let's see what yeah. happens. That's how they're going to be doing it this rate. It is, isn't it? <laughs> and having proper championship points for the positions they. Uh... Yeah. Can you imagine Kimmy doing it? <laughs> <laughs> <And Raikkonen. laughs> you just smash it all up. I mean, they all do simulators, don't they? So they're... yeah, it should be all right. Yeah, can they just stay at the at the bases and just have a virtual one, just off the sims they've got at, at the works? <laughs> right there we go. So that's one on. We've done it like that. Right, one down, one to go. Okay, so the X is on the back. So so we're looking like this one's going to be... Oh my God, it goes over the gear door as well. No one mentioned that one. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, oh no. Nightmare. They're always a nightmare. You get two sets of decals, Phil. To... Oh no, these are the ones me and Matt are sharing. These are extra decals. <laughs> Um, me and my esteemed colleague are sharing some decals because we thought this would be a good idea right up to now (laughs) (laughs) right okay so this is going to be down the front of the seven My wife just coming from shopping. Let's see how the um, successful, successful trip. Shouldn't she be self isolating? Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't, <laughs> get any, um, <laughs> to, couldn't get any stops to have any food delivered oh. at all, could you? No. Not, not this century, anyway. Yeah, that's it. Design, die of the plague, we die of hunger. Yes. Do, 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 do. Sorry, guys, I haven't looked up. Phil, any suggestions for weathering propellers? I'm generally happy with the weathering of the rest of my aircraft, but the propellers never seem to look realistically weathered. Thanks. Uh, if you're doing the style of black prop, I tend to give them a metallic rub, which is what I do to anything black anyway. It just makes it look worn. Um, so what I'll do is I'll use something like a buffable paint, like dark iron, and I have a brush in my kit, which is here. And this here, if you can just about, hold on, I've got a closer camera today somewhere. Hold on. No, no, perhaps I don't have a close school camera. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Hold on. I need to turn that bit off. There we go. So I have this brush here, and then on this brush, basically, it's just got some old buffable. So if I was to brush this now on the props, it will give them a really old, worn look. 
and that's it. So it's just some old dark iron on a brush and I never clean this brush out purely because it's what it's for. It's just for weathering old stuff. So it's like dry brushing the dirt onto it, if that makes sense. Um, and you can do it that way. So um, that works quite well. And then obviously you can do chipping and usual things to it. But I think just a rub like that gives them that worn look. It looks like they've been used then. Uh, Ed says, there's lots of modeling sites on Facebook, but the flooring models is the one for me. Apologies, I don't update it as often as I should. It's a bit like it's the first time I put an Instagram post up in weeks was yesterday. So... Check another reference, Phil. Doesn't sound right. Well, duh. I don't think there is because this is the squirrel one and the squirrel one doesn't even know what colour it is. That's the problem. Oh, this squirrel grey that I've never heard this, of. This is the squirrel scheme that no one's ever heard of. So that's why I can get away with anything on this, I'm thinking. Phil, will there ever be a kit review of the Mini R 135 Pigeons? Do you know what? We stocked them in the store. God knows why, but we did joke about it. I'll send them down to you and do it. So, yes. I'll tell you what, just for you, who was that? Gordon, I will get them sent down and I'll do a review on Pigeons. <laughs> It'll be a short one. Phil, uh, do you still play DCS? The Eurofighter is now available. Well, it's not available yet. It's coming out in the future. I still don't know how that's going to work in DCS seeing as everything is supposed to be post around about the 90s at the earliest. And now they're going to put in a four or five generation aircraft. So I don't know how that's worked. But yes, I do. I'm very excited for the um, Super Carrier to come out because that looks very cool. Um, but yes, I do. I fly the Hornet currently. I'm into the Hornet and learning that going through the um, full fidelity all the situations i can basically do most things in it now so i'm getting a bit uh, better at it uh do, 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 do. two heads talking says all the stock on the pm store italery why is, uh why is that range of kits is it because uh, they are ones in production uh now you sell them well we keep a stock of obviously most things in there um, as I say, uh, what's on the site at the moment isn't exactly uh, representative of what's in the warehouse, purely because we've just been bogged down with everything that's going on. Andy will be working very hard at the weekend, I'm, I'm told. So, yeah, apparently so I've been told, yeah. So I've been told as well. <laughs> he said to me earlier, I'm going to get Andy on it. Um, but yeah, so we have got various stuff that needs to be put up onto the site and stuff like that. But because we've just been bogged down with everything going on this last um you know a couple of weeks we haven't really updated the site very much uh, but we will get back onto it and the stock levels all sorted and everything like that but yeah we carry obviously the italy range we don't stock the entire range of every manufacturer anyway like me and matt and obviously andy we usually get our heads together and we're like right what are we going to carry but we tend to pick out the best in scale or the only thing that's in scale so of everything that we can think of as indecent stuff so, you know, we don't just take on the entire Airfix range. We tend to cherry pick all the best stuff. We don't take on the, obviously all the Italery range, but we take off what people ask for and obviously what's available in that scale. Um, and then same with ICM, same with Tamiya. We can get everything, but we don't keep it all because we're quite a small little company and we can't afford to keep stocks of everything that's out there. But if you need anything, just um, do, do the contact me page on PM Models. That'll take you straight through to Matt or Andy. And um, they can uh, check the availabilities and get it in for you. I mean, when you say a small store, there's still many, many hundreds of kits in stock at any one time, isn't there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's still a warehouse full. It's just that yeah. we can't carry everything if you know what i mean yeah. if we was to carry everybody's range we would need a superstore at that point yeah uh, we yeah. carry speaking probably more the... stock than most shops do put it like that so yeah speaking of which the um six second zeros are now uh, arrived so yeah we'll be invoicing people for those who did the pre-order earlier on in the year uh, they're now in stock so we'll be getting them out soon Mm -hmm. Also, um, we've had Tammy T55s in. Yeah. 
know what else he said. I, I, I can't I remember. Said, he told oh. me you knew. <laughs> <laughs> all i know is that the uh zeros are in and the t55s are in i don't i wasn't aware of anything else to be honest there was it, something it, else he mentioned and i've it. forgotten as well. is he yeah. not in chat quick <laughs> he's in there i know he's there <laughs> this isn't my lunch box no rob this is my this is one of three tornado spare bits boxes i've got <laughs> See, all three of us wrong when he was talking about it, it was over an hour ago and oh look you're out of sight out of mind I know the zeros was the main thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the zeros and the T fifty fives were the, the the headline. It's not a tank, is it? Uh, it was the T fifty five he was on about, but I can't remember what the other one was. <laughs> one of the Abrami type. I can't yeah. remember. Oh, you know, been... it's, you know, he's screaming at the screen at the moment. Well, so that's yeah. his fault. He should type up in live chat, and we'd know it. <laughs> it we're going to be told we're bloody useless in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Graham's asked a question about this stuff. Clear. Yes. I've only ever applied this with a brush. Um, two coats and it's glossy, I think. But I've got this brush is knackered. But I've got a wide, flat brush. I think is that uh, that's how you used to do it, Phil, wasn't it? You always yes. used to do it yeah here with a gloss. Yeah. And I've still I've got with stuff like varnish, and I've not changed my ways. I'm sticking with the old school ways of doing it which is probably the safest way well that's the point it's the, it's the bit of the build that always makes me nervous because if your varnish coats go wrong you buggered up weeks and weeks of work yes I know, I've, I've never used it I, some people that do this sort of self-leveling thinner stuff i just i oh, just can't do it dead and do it Again, like everything, if it's working for you, why change it? You yeah. Know? And that's why I've stuck with my extra acrylics flat varnish. Mm. I've never moved away from that. I sent him a text message asking him. <laughs> See if he comes back. <laughs> he did say he was doing a lot of work on the website this afternoon, trying to get a few things to no, he's just painting some figures in his shirt. Do you reckon? <laughs> 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 And um, Rob has said that as Matt Ball is a northerner, spelt northerner, he should do the pigeon reviews. What we'll is it? That, we'll save that for when they do ferrets. <laughs> Ferret racing. The thing is, Matt, Matt's not a northerner, though, is no, he? No, he's not really. He it pretends. Is, but it's from Nottingham, so that's, um, that's Midlands. I don't know. It depends. It's north of Watford Gap, though, isn't it? <laughs> I'll just. Uh, <laughs> well, look, here he comes now. Oh, dear. A quick word from our sponsor. Yeah, he's on. Put him on loudspeaker and put it up to the mic. Yeah, stick him on speaker. <laughs> Perhaps not. <laughs> Bill, are you planning on doing a review of the Zwilling? The ICM Zwilling? We have got one coming into the store. It's going to be a bit pricey, that kit, though, isn't it? Yeah. See, I'm wondering with that kit, if you buy it, you get enough to do two Heinkel 111s. What? Less than the price of buying them separately. Yeah. I think it's what we said. If you get two Heinkels, you make one, but you can't because you need another engine. Yeah. <laughs> You're an engine short, aren't you? So I'm just wondering if they're just going to put two Heinkel 111 kits in there and an extra sprue for the middle bit. Yeah. Interesting to see how they box that up. But, I mean, it's going to look awesome, that kit. It's going to be huge, though. Yeah. It's going to be big. 65 quid. That's a good price. It is a good price, yeah. yeah. And, is any, and Gordon's asking, has anyone seen a review or build of any Valum kits? Oh, yeah, that's a good Matt's thing. the expert. Matt's built uh, the Valum Voodoo. I've done a review of Valum. If you look on the, the site, there's reviews of Valum. Matt says he's built Valum kits. And he says, Phil, look at the YouTube chat. <laughs> Am I going to yeah. get a load of shit in here? I can't because, oh, yeah, hold on, I can't. I'll do it on a different screen. <laughs> I'm not going to touch the javelin today. I'm doing a little bit of work on the tornado <gasps> without filming it. Bit of a... I've actually robbed some bits out of the Hobby Boss. The Hobby Boss tornado kit is brilliant because it gives you tons and tons of weapons, some of which 
I don't think we're ever fitted to Tornado. It's got. I'm doing the German version of the JP233, which was the airfield denial thing that just spat yeah. out loads of bits. The bomblets. The little bomblets. So they come in the um, Hobby Boss kit. The German one does the JP233s. Eddard, I think, was it? Yeah, they're releasing it next month, aren't they? Allegedly. Yeah, that's what people used to buy the old Airfix kits for, was buy just it for the weapons. The, yeah. Bin the kit and just keep the weapons. <laughs> and he's absolutely letting himself what's going on. What's going on? Because I can't see whatever he's put in. <laughs> he's chuckling away at some. He's I muted. put it on, muted. Telly. Put your mic back on. You all right there? He's unmuted, can't he? He's muted. Oh, put your mic back on. James is asking what's wrong with Northerners. <laughs> Lots of planets have a north. <laughs> and Rob's backtrack. No, wrong with Northerners, James. <laughs> That's the old divide is where is the north and the south? Well, this is it. I don't know if other countries have that sort of north-south divide thing. That says you're useless, Phil. Well, Not me, but you. Oh, I see. So he's saying you really. <laughs> Do you want me to pop onto the YouTube? So what was it? Room? What's the missing thing? What did we forget? Uh, Ethics Tiger Moth. Oh, that's the oh. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one. That would be disgusting. That's, that's now in stock. And also, uh, we've got the 148 Dragon Ju 188s. Oh, do you know what? That's the second hand price of that kit destroyed, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They I'm, were. I'm about to double check with him. He said Ju 188. Well, yeah. They were hen's teeth a while ago, them things. Yeah. You fancy building another one, Nathan? In a proper scale? It's just thought, ah, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it says a man with a huge stash. I'd like to do another one, but I the finished one in 72. But... Yeah. Yeah, it's a, I think it's the best version of the 88. That sort of the, that's the shape of the nose on the one eight eight looks brilliant. Small matter of get this COVID nineteen out of the way. Get back. Chris, to... Christopher says the US has a north south divide. It was mm. pretty intense in the eighteen sixties. <laughs> yeah. To put it yeah, mildly, isn't quite that bad. <laughs> to put it mildly. We had the War of the Roses, didn't we? Which was yeah, that was. Hey, left I'm on right. a battlefield. Don't forget that right, is yeah. it here. I am actually living on Brow Hill, and the reason right. it's called Brow Hill because it was the Battle of the Roses because it overlooked the battlefield because it's there and it is a cemetery and it's a war grave and they're not allowed to build on it or anything else like that. And that's why the road behind me is Cavalier Drive. We have Roundhead Road, we have Musket Drive, we have Cannon Road, and it's all Drum Road. And that's why it's, you've got Drum Bridges, which is the, the big off the roundabout off of here, because they're all named after the Battle of the Roses. Yeah. Chris Hewitt says anything south of Dundee has is, is, um, is usually been a suspect. <laughs> it's even a suspect. Because we're in the, with the Scottish people, we're in the Shires, aren't we? To so be honest, a bit like saying anybody up north, when you live where I live, that's anything near over Bristol. Yeah. So, well, Rob, Rob says it's north of the M25, Andy, so that's the north. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in London, you've got north and south just inside London, haven't you? Yeah. It's a river. Ed's asked a sensible question. It's just popped up. What's the advantage of using rapid thinners other than a quicker drying time? Also, does it tend to increase tip dry? Not so much tip dry because it's a lacquer, but it, it will give you a flatter finish because it hasn't got time to level out. So I would only ever use it with matte coats. Yeah, so if you're using it for matte coat, I think you'd be absolutely fine. But if you try and use it for any type of satin or gloss, I think you're going to have a a bit of a hard time with it. Yeah, I found like this stuff, if, you, if I mean rapid thinners goes out of stock, doesn't it, once or twice? Yeah. I think this, Tamiya, this one is almost as good. The Tamiya yeah, one without the retarder in it. Yeah. We've got loads of rapid thinners in stock at the moment. Mm. Yes, we've had a restock. 
Right there. Nigel says, um, I just got the Dragon 48th J188. I bet, and now I bet uh, PM sells it for less. <laughs> Sorry, does happen. I'll tell you what, they were selling for crazy money six, eight months ago there. That's literally King's Ransom mm -hmm. for JU188. David says, Phil, I just found out that Royal Mail will not ship to the Philippines now because of the virus. Uh -huh. So I uh, will now have to wait till the Chinese virus passes over. Can't say that. It's not a Chinese virus, it's a worldwide virus. But isn't um, that what Hataka have said, like the Polish post office are not shipping outside of Poland? A couple of postal services are sort of shutting their international hmm. posts down, maybe just to reduce the amount of post in the system. I don't know. Well, I spoke to my nice post lady today from a safe distance, clearly, and I said to her if it's still okay, and she said, as far as they're concerned, it's business as usual. So that's fine. And to be honest with you, you lot ordered an absolute ton of stuff. As fast as I was actually packaging it up, I had all orders coming through. Literally, I was having orders every few minutes coming through this morning. And I really didn't think I was going to get them all out because I was still doing it at midday. Um, but uh, anyway, they have all gone and sorted. So that's the main thing. Chris says, anyone see Nicholas Moran, a.k.a. The Chieftain, latest vlog on YouTube is about to tackle some major PE on the Japanese warship, sanding down decks. God help him. Yeah, God help him. And Dennis says, I got a steel once on a Tamiya Swordfish 48 for less than 20 quid. That's uh, 20 US dollars. That's a bargain. Mm. David says, Well, it was the Chinese who made the virus. Controversial. I, I was reading something that they had in Wuhan, they had a virology lab, and there's a something with bats there's loads of conspiracy theories there's like, loads of conspiracy yeah there is a lot yeah uh, uh, yeah i'm seeing lots of weird and wonderful stuff about scientists investigating bats i think a lot of it comes from the the book into that was written years ago decades ago about the chinese government making a virus in wuhan but that was just like a fictional book yeah it was in... that started a lot of um a lot of internet chatter that's the problem yeah isn't it? they're looking for patient zero aren't they and like who got it first and stuff and you'll probably never know the thing is as you know my better half is a medical professional as they say so when i say to her things like this she's like grow up <laughs> <laughs> you know because <laughs> i say to her oh my god look it's come from monkeys and all this and she's like for christ's sake when you grow up you should know better <laughs> tim says with the revel 48 tornado is it necessary to replace the eject seats i didn't get the eddard one as i have the rebel kits the resin ones you can get a couple, a couple of manufacturers do them i mean it's it's it Airy. I imagine Eddard do them as well then now, don't they? I don't know if you can buy the Eddard ones separately, but Aries do them. They've been around for, there's been plenty of options with tornado ejector seats, and it's the same thing. It's like, you don't have to. The kit ones are okay. I mean, they're not as good as a resin one, obviously, because the seat belts, that's perhaps the best reason to get a resin one is just to get the seat belts looking a bit better. I think when I did my 32nd one, I think it was one of the main things I changed on that was the, I put some resin, seat, uh, resin seats in it. I think it's the same, it's not, there's no particular reason to for that kit, it's the same with any other kit. A lot of people, it's like, it's like the Lightning or the F-16, if you're going to upgrade one thing, then it's always worth getting a seat, isn't it, for anything, because they look nicer with all the sort of moulded um straps and stuff but i don't know if eddard are releasing their tornado seat separately or not i'm not sure <laughs> mark says has anyone tried using rapid thinner with extra color enamel to see if it sorts out the infamous drying time i ain't got any 
Are there enamels left anymore, to be honest with you? I could give it a go. Um, you got some, Nathan. Maybe I'll put... I'll, I've not got my airbrush set up today, but maybe I'll put that on something to test next week. Raymond says, uh, Phil, we'll be stocking Tammy's new SV Russian tank. Are we? <laughs> Pass. Um, which one's that? Probably. I don't know. That's why I'm not up on tanks and armour, so I haven't got a clue. SV, is that the Swedish? Well, it says Russian, so... A Russian? KV. Where's the S and K keys on the key? They've got a new KV tank coming Paxi out. means KV. If it's a new Tammy, then it'll definitely be... If it's a new kit, then yes, definitely. We, we get all the brand new stuff in straight away anyway, so... Maybe it's a good, good target for a pre-order again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talk, to Matt. Talk to Matt about it. And... Yeah, Wait. we'll grab away with Matt getting sorted. Mr. J says, have you uh, have you glued white metal um, I'm, or is soldering the best? To be honest, white metal, I usually super glue it. Um because soldering it I gave it away a girl once and it didn't work um, because it's very soft and you can melt, melt it. it I think probably my soldering iron is a cheapy one it just gets way too hot yeah it just melt isn't it basically because I, I did try it once anyway. and yeah it just didn't work very well but I say I've just got a cheapy literally what a, an iron as in it's got a point on it uh, and, that, and you plug it in you know 240 volt and away you go but in one as, temperature yeah that's it one does all <laughs> melt mode um so that may be way too hot for that type of application but yes oh matt was in chat oh sorry that chat i thought you meant as in chat as Our in the chat. other one look there's somebody no. called mb3000 in the chat that's <laughs> so he's been shouting tiger moth ju 188 <laughs> 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 I've just come you to it. I didn't know his YouTube name. Yeah, I didn't know his YouTube name. That was trouble. And that's why we have real names on the forum. There you go. Uh, somebody else was just asking about it. Uh, oh, yeah, Phil, have you ever tried epoxy clay putty? Uh, what about uh, milliput and stuff? Yes, used to all the time. Used to use the milliput for making filler jobs, really. Um, I used to make um, harnesses and various bits and pieces. I don't tend to use it with scale modeling now because there's other options, but when I do prop work, I use it. Because um, if I've got something big to fill and stuff like that, then yeah, you know, for big stuff, then I will just fill it full of mi uh, milliput. The great thing with milliput, I, you know, a little tip for you is that we'll put add water. A lot of people, they're there doing it and it's drying like one to one. If you add a little bit of water to it, you can almost make it like a paste. Um, and it's a lot more pliable as soon as you add a little bit of water to it. It'll still dry and it'll be fine, but it makes it a lot easier to work with. Yeah, apparently Tammy's got a new KV-1 coming out. Yes, mm. so Daryl says on here as well, Tammy's new KV-1 looks really good. Uh, it gets released on time. Due, uh, sorry, if it gets released on time due to current situation, anyone's guess, I suppose, for the future. We will get one in and I will review it. Is it 35th or 48th? Not sure. Know. Phil needs to say socially distant from YouTube. Probably. <laughs> I'm all over it at the moment. I'm on it every day. It's great. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. The guys who knew it was Matt in there saying keep them straight. You're all northern <laughs> to me. Is he from Antarctica? That'd be a good <laughs> one. <laughs> couple of questions on our chat yeah um well to quickly the tamiya kb1 is 35th scale um rob t is asking if we'll do a if you'll do a pre-order on the tamiya on the tamiya on the gr4 tornado retirement markings when it comes out again that's one for matt isn't it um phil or team is this is from david pierce he's using a trn1 needle his trn1 needle is a bit is a bit bent since we can't order a new needle, what's the best way to fix a bent airbrush needle? To be honest with you, I just use my plates, uh, which I've got somewhere. Um, straighten them out and just drag them backwards to try and straighten them. And then I've got, I don't know where it is, it was here, uh, here it is. Uh, I use one of these. 
So this is just one of my sanding plates, you know, literally you've got soft side, hard side, and then literally just drag it across and redo it, but it won't be as good as the real thing. You know what, what I do is I take the back of the airbrush off like that, mm -hmm. place it down on a hard surface, and then put the tip of the airbrush, of the needle underneath it, and just put a bit of pressure on the back of the, roll it back a bit and put a bit of pressure on, and then roll the needle underneath it. Mm -hmm. and it's all like as it rolls around, it'll straighten the tip out. Yeah. In the metal of your airbrush against the hard surface that you do it against. Cutting match probably not hard enough. You need. No, it you to... need like if you have like a steel ruler as well. Put it against yeah. that. As long as you've got two hard surfaces. Yeah. yeah. And if so, you just just yeah, a bit, a bit of pressure when you, ro you just roll it back on top of the needle. Yeah. Just that. Like, just then just twist the needle round, but make sure you keep it to the same angle. Is what the needle you know is so it's you know slightly you know make sure it's not bent you know flat otherwise you'll end up bending it more or not you know not too far up make sure it's on the same angle as the needle just roll it around and it'll just start taking the edge off it this might be wrong roger asked a while ago if phil you're going to build the sea fury but you've built one haven't you yeah i've done a sea fury we all did that was on one of those Wednesday... We did it as a live build, yeah. Live thing, but we it? all built some um, Sea Furies, so... Yes. They're all at the unit. Guys, can you guys get in uh, Cora models, 132nd decals for the Gloucester Gladiator in the Latvian Air Force and then ship them to Canada? We can, but I'm sure you could get them probably direct quicker than we could. Let me just have a quick look. To be honest with you, that's one of those things. Because it's decals, they're so cheap to post as well. I would have thought you could probably find somebody more local just to post them. Because obviously we have to get them from our source to us and then off to you. So we could probably do it. Because our people tend to carry most things like that. Don't forget to like the video. Absolutely. Because we've only got 20 likes so far. Very disappointing. We've had over 100 likes for every video we've done recently, which is brilliant. Is amazing. Uh, how many fights have the live stream had recent received today? Yes, 20. That's all we've had today. 24. There you go. Everyone's clicking. Thank you, guys. Uh, Bill, use mechanic soldering paste. I can beat you because I've been using that for donkey's years. You mean this stuff? Ah, it's my second pot of it. It's good stuff. Hello, Lola. Have you just woken up? You're looking very tired. <laughs> Hard dog. <laughs> Christopher's starting to talk about sea furies and wheel wells. Oh, God, don't even <laughs> go there. <laughs> You'll let that one go. Yeah. Who's yeah. that? Christopher. Step you away. Walk away, away Christopher. <laughs> you don't really want to have that conversation with us. And Gordon Graham's had a, a good post in a forum earlier in the week. Um, a discussion was held about the support the group gives to other modelers. He's, he's just joined and completed his first model in 45 years. Was worried about posting pictures, but did, even though it was the wrong colour, etc. All I had was supportive comments. It's been a great, it's been great. So he's on to his second build. Thank you to the team and all the other members. And that is the best thing about Flory models. Yeah. Is none of it nonsense. Like it's all positive, positive. It. And Hobby. if you put it in the gallery, it will appear at the end of today's show. Yeah. Neil has said, "Do you think we'll get coronavirus model kits or stuff uh, or st of stuff like ambulances, medical personnel, hospital diorams, etc.? You can already get. I've already seen a um, boxing yeah. of. Uh, I've done the corona one, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we post it up? <laughs> I, yeah. Hold on. I might be able to get it. Hold on. Um. <laughs> Uh, how am I going to do this? Uh... Oh, the old, that's really funny, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and Nigel's put a, a, a little quote up that I'm going to use from now on. He says, the Sea Fury wheel wells are the colour of a can of worms. Right, <laughs> I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm having that phrase. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> one. Right, hold on a minute. Uh, let me just get rid of that. My computer hates this. Look, high CPU usage. There we go. This is Revel's latest release. 
Yay. This one was doing the rounds around the internet. I got sent it loads of times by you guys. Thank you very much. You did give us all a very good chuckle. <laughs> very good. Hold on, what have we got that one on? Hold on, I'll get rid of that. Oh, right. Hold on, oh my lordy. Right, that's it. Got loads on the go. Dee, 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 dee. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, apparently it's the Tamiya KV. It is 135th scale. Thank you, guys. I bet that's going to be lovely. Somebody said the other day they're going to build a super lab. I said, I've already got one. <laughs> Lola, the super lab. <laughs> Gordon says, afternoon, it's the weekend starts here. Now to get on with my Royal Navy Lynx build and the Matchbox Char 1 disc kit. Yeah. It is, it's Friday, isn't it? This is like, this is the weirdest thing about being in isolation. Every day is like Sunday plus one, Sunday plus two. So it's like Grand Ole Day plus Friday, three. isn't it? It's, you know. I must admit, I've definitely been losing track of the days. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've only been off for a week, so... I got an email from the English Heritage today saying that their planned reopening of May the 1st has gone for a Burton. Yes. So I reckon it's going to be the end of May before we we're allowed to play out at pubs and well, stuff. They're, 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 they're asking you to renew your, renew your subscription. Well, they give me a three-month extension on the subscription, but, God, can you imagine what? The city centre of Liverpool near me is just going to go absolutely bananas when the first night the pub's open. <laughs> <laughs> people are going to go well, nuts. There's going to be all these people absolutely smashed. Yeah, it's gonna, the hospitals are going to be busier than they really ought to be, aren't they? Yeah. God, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be... Oh, I just Especially if the it. weather's nice. <laughs> it's yeah, going to be a nightmare. It, I mean, if this lockdown ends at the end of May or June, which I suspect it, or hope or suspect it will, if it's a hot weekend, oh yeah. my God. It's it's supposed rather, to be a nice weekend this weekend, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, my sort of weekend activities are putting flower beds in, in the garden, but I've got no plants to put in them. <laughs> That's me. A hot sunny day is me just digging holes in the garden. What's the got? Anything else? Uh, do, 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 do. With all this talk about tornadoes, uh, I look to see what I have in the stash. He's got the 140th Esky Desert Storm Kit, classic, and yep. the 32nd Revel Kit, again, classic. Are they worth building, or should I pass on them? Uh, well, that's a good question. I mean, there's, be there's better options out there now. Yeah. Um, the Esky kit, like I was saying with the Airfix kit, you've got an opportunity there to build like a really early tornado because it's the, the the tooling's like ancient. Yeah. But I think I might be wrong. I've not got one of those, have I? See, I might have, I've got one in a minute, but the old, the classic tornado kits are basically the prototypes. Might be an opportunity to do that. I'm going to see if I've got one and be back in a minute. Cool. There's, uh, there's nothing massively wrong with the 30 second Revel one, is it? Just a bit. It's just older, isn't it? I don't know when yeah. it came out that kit, but it's just showing its age a bit. But as in for shape and that, I always thought it was all right. Looks yeah. like a tornado to me. No, I thought I had one, but I don't think I do. But like I said, I mean, it's you've got it in your stash. You might as well. I was going to say, I wouldn't pass on it. I think, you know. If you're going to... Otherwise, you're going to be just spending what, 25, 30 quid for another one. That's the no, 30, 30 second rebel one's not too bad, isn't it? No, I think it's fine. I mean, I know that it's 
There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's not a Tammy kit, but... Oh, God, no. Not by any means. Didn't the Esky kit have a funky canopy? I'm, I'm not sure, Graham. Just, um... I thought I had one, but I've got the 72 one that told. Have a look. Let me have a look and see if I can... Is Matt up back at the uh, doing his buccaneer? Or am I going to beat him? That's the question. <laughs> doing his groundwork on his. Uh, yeah, I'm just doing, thinking. Doing his groundwork for his uh, thingy. Oh, right. His, um, armor. Yeah, the ESCII kit is basically a uh, PA200 MRCA, so I'd use that kit to build a. Prototype tornado. Because there's a subtle differences on the tail. I'd there use it as an opportunity to build like a, again like a super early tornado just just in service. Because I bet it's got loads of what would now be useless weapons. But for that Well, my paint's on again then. Hold on, hold on, let me just do this oh. back up and then we'll have a look. Hold on, let me just work out how this goes off. In a head. Oh, looking at one on eBay, it looks a bit rusty to get this Esky Tornado. It's kind of a bit. A bit like that as well, to be fair. Ad Adrian's asking me, where is... Where do I get lightning PK1441722 decals from as mine are too old to use? So the PK144 is the matchbox lightning, isn't it? Extra decals do nice lightning decals. Perhaps go that route. <clears throat> Right, okay. Uh, assuming people will have money after the lockdown, uh, which is an issue over here in the US, definitely. You guys are really finding it a bit um, over there. I think got it bad here. Uh, afternoon, guys. Uh, I'm about to start a 35th scale uh, Tiger. Uh, what uh, that has Zimmer it on? What would you use to replicate it? I've been told wood filler works. Steve, I'll be honest with you and I will show you one that I did because everyone asks this question, it comes up a lot and I see people really, I don't know, t talk about making it hard for themselves, shall we say. So if you go over to video builds, admittedly, it is one of our pay for ones if you're not, but if you go down to the tiger, I did a king tiger down in here um, and it was obviously with the full internal details and all the rest of it. And But I put onto it in here somewhere. Uh, must be back a bit, back a bit, back a bit. Back a bit, 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 back a bit. Hold on. Where is it? Right, okay. So the way I do it, here you go. Um, this is putty. And I use water-based putty because that way if it goes horrendously wrong, you can wash it off. So perfect plastic putty. I'll show it in a minute. I use a, a saw blade and we just go along and then do a kink, go along, do a kink, go along, do a kink. And I did the entire thing like it. And then when you get down to some better pictures of it, here we go. So uh, there we go. So you can see you've got that sort of worn look. You put the sort of splats as you drag it up and down, you go along, go up and down, go along, go up and down. You can put it in like it. The great thing with this is one, it takes the texture of the wash brilliantly to look really, really nasty and gnarly. But also you can chip it and knock bits off. So I did the entire thing with this and hopefully I've got some decent pictures of it. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Uh, hold on. Inside, outside. Here we go. So what I did was on some of the edges and that I just chipped it. So this is literally as it was like a field applied version of. But on the bottom of the turret and things like that I actually knocked lumps off. But because you, you can physically pick pick at the putty when it's dry because it's not rock hard and it almost sits on the surface and so it doesn't really bond that well uh, because it's not a like a, um, a what would you call it chemical based one like a lacquer based one 
So that way you can go along and do it all like this on here to really sort of chip it about and pull around with it. But say that one didn't have it at all, so I went around and put all of this on um, just to go around. But you say you can knock it, you can chip it, you can poke at it and all the bits. I did it on the turret around the other side. You can't really see it. I haven't got a good photo of that. But there you go. And that's it. And you knock bits off and you can literally just have fun with it and see how you get on. So yes, that's what I would recommend for it. And then again, this is the stuff because if it goes horrendously wrong, you just wash it off literally with water and it will just rinse off. And even when this is dry, you can still rinse this off. So even if it goes rock hard, you will go back to being a water, you know, back to a, a putty and it will just wipe away and rinse off. Uh, so it's really handy for doing that type of work. So yes, that's what I recommend. Or buy the one with the Zimmer already on it. Or buy the one with the Zimmer already on it. Yes. Can we get in the Ara Armor Hobby FM2 Wildcat in 70 second Andy? The who? It's called uh, Aram, so Armor, so it's A-R-M-A -A Hobby M2-2 Wildcat. Mm. Marty Fox says he really enjoying watching the show. Don't forget, we've got loads of shows. And if you didn't see last night's, we had um, uh, Paramjet, and he is a product designer, as in he makes kits for Airfix. So he works for Airfix, and he was on with us yesterday. So if you haven't seen it, click back on yesterday's, and you can see our interview, laid back interview with him. And hopefully within a week or two, he's going to come back on and do part two of it, because we've still got loads of stuff to cover. I can't see him. I thought we had them in anyway. All right. So Gordon says, are there any forthcoming kit releases that we're looking forward to? Like the Eddard Spitfire and the Airfix Bufort are definitely on his radar. What you're looking out for then kids? My next purchase is likely to be the RAF version of the Buccaneer that you're building now. Yeah. Is the boat for the um, Mark IV? I don't know. I don't know. The more solid nose. Yeah. Pass. Because they've done the Mark I, haven't they, with the. Weird names. I'm not thinking of Blenheims, are you? I certainly am. <laughs> the Beaufort's the funky looking thing that's brand new, isn't it, in 72? Screw that. <laughs> I like the short nose Blenheim when you, while you're talking about Blenheims there. The Mark Bond looks nice. Quick question. Alan's asking, is it safe to put acetone through your airbrush? Yes, yeah, modern airbrushes you won't have a problem as long as it hasn't got the old fashioned rubber seals in it. You would be, I would have thought you'd be fine. Cheers, Matt. Has he just jumped on live? Has he? He just messaged me. Hmm. Look, and Rob's banning me from saying Matchbox again because he gets cold shivers thinking of his Chinook. Turned out right. Yeah, that'd be a nice thing for Airfix to re release their Chinook. Hmm. Should have a go at the Chinook, shouldn't they? I can't see that armor one available. I think it's that one that is when it comes in, it comes in and. But we, we have had them in the uh, store before, definitely. The Spitfires and Hurricanes and things. Mm 
Chris is what scares the gannet you're doing. Unfortunately, it's 70 seconds scale. Yeah. You She's wanna, not scared at all. Want a 48 scale gannet? God damn it. Mm. It's, um, it's a sword gannet. Not very nice kit. Oh, that's it. Blame the kit. It's a bit rough. You're not allowed to blame the kit. That's what was banned when we started these. I can't share the other side because I've taken the load of the paint off with me. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, I'll show you the other side. Oh my god. Needs a bit of a repair work going on it. Mm. Alan said he bought loads of Rebel Gannets and every one of them had a split canopy. Mm. Nathan's got one of them. Mm. I've got one in here, there, look. <laughs> yeah. Salt that with tarp. Split canopy here, split canopy there. I'll just yeah. put tarp on it. I'll build that kit as well. Yes, that's a lovely kit, but the canopies, oh my gosh. Yeah, I've got two of them. I've got that one and the um, orange one. Yeah, I've done the orange one, to be honest. I've done the German boxing. Mm. With the, the German one, you, do, you get the British markings in that as well, Nathan? Yeah, I did it in German ones, but you've definitely got some British markings in that boxing. Um, I'd have to have a quick look at scale mates because they've done two, haven't they? That's the anti submarine one, yeah. And the train, um, train, train one is like, all like silvery colored, isn't it? Yes, Ravel Gannet, Fairy Gannet T5. So that was the second, is that the second boxing? Is it T5 that's still flying? So, yeah, well, the T5 flying at the moment, are they? It gives you one the rest New Richmond Airport in Wisconsin and then RNAS Cold Rose. That's a 2013 one that. What it's, happened to the because they were bringing one back to the UK, weren't they? And then it broke. Well, I think they yeah, yeah, get it, over, it, there's they? a lot of a lot of legal stuff went on with it. It wanted to end up going back to the US and I think it's yeah. um back up and flying again, I believe. Hmm. The Rebel Gannet AS one and four, you get three German uh, Marine Flieger ones, and then you can do 815 NAS Fleet Air Arm one. It's just a few British decals. New box, new box. Sword. Swords. Sword ones on scale, mate, for some reason. You do a frog one from 1956 if you really want to. Mm, if you're really feeling brave. See, sword kits are all right, but the devil's to build sometimes, aren't they? To be honest with you, if I was a kit manufacturer, that's the two aircraft I'd probably start with. I'd do a 48 scale Buccaneer, both versions, right? And then I'd do the Gannet, both versions as well, in 48. Yeah. I think no one does them. I think it'd be good little sellers from a, a financial point of view, which then would hopefully pay for your uh, future, you know, work and all the rest of it, because they're quite a surefire aircraft to do, you know? Because, mm, yeah, I mean, I know you've not got many international operators, but you've got Royal Navy hmm. and Air Force with the Buccaneer. You've got your Desert Storm ones at the end. Yeah. Also, the thing is, I think, like with the Gannet as well, they're very interesting aircraft. Yeah, they look different to everything else. It's not like the usual shapes, you know. They've all got their quirky little things. If anyone's ever seen or been up to a Buccaneer, you look at its gear. It looks like it's just solid. There's no moving parts almost. It looks like piano legs. <laughs> yeah, it is a hefty looking. It is a hefty bird. Yeah. Stu says Andy doesn't like short run kits. So it doesn't go together like that, Tammy reverts to a box of tissues on his bench. Oh. Fair, I do I do actually like doing them to be honest with you. I mean it's it, not the first sword of kit I built. Um and I like the challenge of it if it's sometimes it's just like, yeah, you think why have they done that? And I think um, it's they can just sap time. These yeah. kit and just live I've on. I've only been building it a 
what, a week, is it? Mm. Not too bad. But it's not, yeah, it's just... I could have done with spending more time on it, really, yeah, so I made it a bit more... I said, but you saw it, yeah, it gets stayed away, I think. Enough's enough. It'll do. Simon says, Trumpeter's 32nd BAC Lightning, is it a good kit? Yeah. It's, the best. it's the best 32nd Lightning now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's got accuracy issues, but if you're willing to live with that, then yeah, it's a good kit. That's I think it builds well. Like all trumpeter kits build well, really, don't they? Yeah, just fall short. If you're a bit rivet countery, then you can have issues with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Stu says, uh, Stu says, I think you have to be in the mood to do a short run kit. I'm doing the Sword C5 multi boxing, and they aren't shake and bake kits, unfortunately. New or not. Yeah, one of the, I think the most enjoyable kit I've ever built was the, um, the Hurricane I built, which was the. Flight. Flying, yeah, fly models, yeah. uh, sea hurricane, yeah. To be honest oh. with you, I quite like working on short run kits <laughs> and that because, you know, it's one of those things where you know it's going to have fit issues, you know it's going to have problems, so you've got no expectations of the kit whatsoever. That's yeah. why I always say, you know, and uh, like last one I did from that point of view would have been the Wessex, mm. um, and a lot of people said to me at the time, "You're mad." Because it's got this and it's got no detail and it's like it doesn't actually take too much to get it up to scratch it's just a little bit of scratch building inside a little bit of wiring putting in some formers usual things which is normal and then you know a little bit of work around the cockpit as well but it's all there it just doesn't necessarily go together like a tamiya kit so you've got to work it out so if that means a lot of test fitting and various things and like where the front end goes on it's an awful join it is literally like curved rounds. So I ended up sanding it square and bringing them in. And then we put a little bit of resin behind it and, you know, some plastic card to strengthen it. But it's all out of sight, out of mind. You can't see it's got it in there. So that all worked okay. And yeah, the bottom didn't fit whatsoever. So it's a case of, you know what, I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to fill it. You know, there's no there's no easy way to do it. And because there's no expectations, you just get on with it. It's not like you're second guessing yourself. Like, have I done something wrong that it doesn't work? It's no, no, it doesn't work. So just get the filler out and go for it. Mark said, just bought the 48 Trumpeter Sea Fury. The riveting is awful, but at least it has more detail than the Airfix kit. What's it, what scale is he bought? 48. I don't know. Our little Sea Furies were right. Yeah. <laughs> We only did the, we, as I say, I might have the odd little issue with mine, like it missing half of it, but it was all right. Mine had a little bit missing off it, but mm. um, yours, yeah, I thought it was a nice kit. <laughs> Went together well. Uh, Mesa109 says, I found your antidote for the grainy Molotov pen superb. Absolutely. It's worked a treat. I've got it down to sus now. That worked absolutely fantastic. Uh, apparently, Nathan, no flowers in your garden. Just dig it, and you can make your own World War One trench. One to one scale. Like that now. There you go. <laughs> like you start growing vegetables in it, so you have, don't have to go to the shops. Well, this is it. Yeah. I did say it's going to be like the good life. That's it. We're going to have to pull up the driveway and start yeah. planting. Get a goat, some chickens. <laughs> That's what we're going to end up like here. Uh, where are we? Roger says, I only ask about the Sea Fury as I've got one and was looking for tips for problems and that. If you, the Airfix one goes together, no problems at all. Honestly, it's a really, really nice kit. I didn't have, I had issues with mine because mine it was a short shot. As always, I get half a cow. So, yes. But apart from that, it was all right. I don't know. Did you have any fit issues with yours, Andy? Do you remember? No, I mean, like, you're, you, you've got half your tail missing, didn't you? Mine was, yeah. like, missing from a panel line, the first panel line back, and I just, like, filled it and re-scribed it. But, no, 
Yeah, it was. It, no, it went together really nicely. Yeah. The only problem I found is that I believe that on the nose it had got like an extra bump that shouldn't have been there. Yeah, there's a couple of details. Everyone, luckily, because we did it live, everyone was saying to us, "Don't forget, take the bump out." It didn't have it, and so we were like, yeah. "Fair enough, whip that off." So if yeah. you didn't know, so you, it, you like, wouldn't know. But fit one. You have to re-scribe it all on the nose because you yeah. take that out, and the uh, engine cowling brackets are a bit faint and a bit yeah wishy-washy but no it, pop, it was a nice looking kit and that goes together well and hmm. yeah yeah apart from phil did his wheel wells wrong color mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> everyone did wrong colors i think we should have all just picked a color <laughs> then one of us might have been right the funny thing was though a couple of months later wouldn't it we were all at duxford yeah. and they have one there so we all stuck our head under it and that was a different color again so it was like forget it i give up i don't care so <laughs> Anyway, uh, a couple of other questions here. Uh, this is from Bobby, who says, awesome advice on the tornadoes. Thank you all. Um, Timothy says, just started modeling and enjoying the 132nd models. Do you think that I should start with 148th or 172nd? I do prefer larger models. Honestly, personal opinion, obviously, you know, others may vary. I would say if you're enjoying doing 32nd, build 32nd. You know, a lot of people say about, oh, I should start smaller and I should practice on a kit. No, do what you want to do and what you enjoy because the principles of modeling doesn't matter if you're doing it in 72nd, 48th, 16th or 24th, 32nd, whatever it is, because it's the same thing. Test fitting is a key. Make sure you do all that before you commit to glue. Fill in as minimal as you need to do right the way through, but mainly enjoy it. That's the whole point to it. But a lot of people say about, oh, you should start on cheap kits and stuff. Cheap kits can be nasty kits, as we all know, because most of us are building one form or another at the moment. Um, so, you know, you pay a little bit more, you'll get a nicer kit, you know, so it might be a, a more enjoyable build, especially to getting going. You don't want to be, you know, up against a real crap kit that you don't enjoy building, uh, especially for the early days. You do that later on when you're a martyr. Um, but generally, I would say a lot of people say about, you know, obviously, you know, starting with 172nd, then you move out to 40. I don't agree with that. I say if you want to do 30 second kits, build 30 second kits. It's just that sometimes 48 scale, I say, is the sweet spot because from a weathering point of view and painting, they're easier. You can hide things in there. If you go too small and you get it wrong, it's very obvious. And if it's too big, you can't hide it. So you can't put a bit of weather in and get away with it. You know, it literally is going to be glaring on the bigger scales. But from a building point of view, I don't think it makes any difference. What do you reckon, guys? I'd build whatever I want, but yeah, it doesn't. I mean, I honestly don't like 10 second scale, so I'd rather go 48th because it's in the middle. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, uh, you know, but, like for me, wing that wings kit being 30 second scale is perfect because, you know, and obviously I've just done the Gladiator as well. 30 second scale because of the rigging, I wouldn't want to do it any smaller purely because it would just drive me mad. And uh, with my sausage fingers, it just isn't going to work. It's going to be, it's going to be a gluey mess. So yeah. that's why I quite like doing the bigger scales for that type of thing. Definitely wouldn't do it smaller. And I've been building a Siemens SSW German World War One plane. And I've literally, it's completely painted, completely decalled. Just need to do the rigging on it. Hmm. It's been sat in its box for about a year because I can't. <laughs> can't face it. Stop <laughs> rigging on it now. Uh, Philip says uh, the Revel ADV F3 is an excellent kit currently on his bench. It is very good. Um, Messer says again, uh, is it pronounced tornado or tornado or tornado or whatever? It is. It always makes you laugh when the Americans try and pronounce it because they call it like tornado. It's a bloody tornado. It's the same as what's coming out of the sky with a tube under it. It's a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter. I mean, the Italians pronounce it a bit more flamboyantly, musically. Music, yeah, but they do for anything music. at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pronounced the same as you say the weather. Yeah. Effect, and if that's different where you live, then it's different where you live, isn't it? Because to be honest, that's what they've done after them. Is that the RAF? Well, we still are. If we're going to have the storm, which allegedly is the next name for the new one, isn't it? the mm. fifth gen they're saying going on about calling it the storm but normally they're all weathers so that's why we have typhoon hurricane yep. tornado tempest 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bombers are a bit different because they were after cities, weren't they? And towns. Because we have Wellington, yes, uh, Manchester, Lancaster, Lancaster, Lincoln. And then tanks are named after. Churchill's Chieftain Challengers. They're all C, aren't they? Because wasn't it something yeah. to do with Churchill couldn't pronounce things or something? So they made them all C's. <laughs> So that's why you get Cromwell and all the ones like that. Obviously, Sherman's different because that was American. Uh, right. Nice to see the gannet. I, uh, sorry, decided, uh, sorry, uh, where are we? Nice to see the gannet um, uh, deckled, a hobby boss one from a friend of mine who has shake uh, shakes his hands too much. Must get that one day. Definitely. Very nice. Trumpeters 132nd BAC Lightning. Is it a good kit? I think you've answered that on the other one, didn't you? All right. So, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, my Rebel 1 GR4 has uh, a warped wing uh, and it's made a code of the anhedral um, and the panel lines needed three millimeters shaved off. The panel needed three millimeters to shave off to give it a fit. Have you found any warpage on yours? No, that's 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 perhaps a letter to Ravel to say you've got a duff one. Yeah, I've you may have a duff one, yeah. I've had very flashy ones, but I've mm. never had a warped wing. Send them an email. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Trumpeter's 35th scale Tiger is a good, uh, and he's got the decal for Zimmerit. You can get that. You can get like photo etch version, and you can get like a 3D decal for the Zimmerit uh, and do it that way. Uh, the PPP dry. What's PPP? Oh my god, I'm not up on these things. There's no protection equipment. No, no, that's PPI. <laughs> What's PPP? Oh god, I don't know what PPP is. No idea. That says the PPP. Uh, perfect plastic putty. Ah, <laughs> got you. Uh, dry before you finish scoring it. Yeah, you put it on wet. So we're going back to doing the uh, Zimmerit. Put it all over it, and when it's wet, just go along and. Do, 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 and do it like that it's really straight i did mine in no line under five minutes and it, it was only one area i redid wasn't happy with it so i just wiped it away with a damp cloth gave it a wipe with another damp cloth back to plastic and away we went again the rest of it it was no problem at all and the way i look at it was if you look at the real stuff it was absolutely a mess putting it on so it doesn't really make any difference talk about stuck builds i've done it in 72 there you go see i'm sort of i'm, I'm getting halfway through but that's perfect plastic putty Yep. And I just, I just made, like, I got a small piece of brass sheet and mm -hmm. cut it to the yep. right and just keep stabbing it like that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you it, can it, get as well, like, a, it's like a, a, a wheel, isn't it, which has got teeth. And you can yeah. rub it over it and you do the line, so you just go up with it and it puts the roller thing in. But I just use a blade, just a saw blade, mm. uh, and do it that way. Uh, okay... Do, 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 do. I'm a member, uh, but I haven't managed to figure out how to post on the live feed. Right, so if you go to the tips area on the actual site, hold on, let me just sort this out because we get this asked a lot and I can show the guys whilst we're here. Okay, go to, um, in all categories, at the top of the forum, okay, up in here, okay, go to forum hints and tips just down in here. Okay, pop in here, we've got the help video section. So I've done a load of um, videos on how to use the site. So obviously you've got how to use the main site, how to use the forum, and this is how to use the live chat. So this is what the guys are seeing in here at the moment, you see. So their messages will be in, and you can type your message down here, you can put photos in and bits and pieces, and it all appears just in this area. Then you can snap it uh, and have the other half as watching us live as well on one screen. So that's how that one works. Or you can have a couple of screens going if you've got two screens on the go just in there. Notifications and all the bits and pieces, that's how you keep up to date with everything that goes on. And then how to upload photos to the forum direct so we host your photos for you is in there as well. Okay, but it's quite a good one because you can watch the videos and it explains everything and I show you how to do it as well. Uh, but lots of people ask. But that way you're going because the guys down you know, in front of me, uh, Andy and Nathan watching the team chat, I haven't got the Skype chat on uh, and that's how we tend to do it that way. 
Uh, Hobby Bros is bringing out a J20 Dragon Stealth Fighter in 148 this year. Are they? Mm, didn't know that. The Chinese Gen 5 thing. That's cool. Yes, yes. I've never built one, uh, one of these modern Chinese things. Should I have a go? Mm. Just run through a few in chat, Phil. Yeah. Arch has posted um, his uh, work in progress with his gannet that he's doing. Same uh, one, that, same one as me. Looking very nice. Mm -hmm. Alan says Trumpeter is kit's, kit's good. Have you ever built the one thirty fifth Challenger two? Jesus, that was painful. I've built the. I have built actually myself, and it was not a nice kit. Yeah, yeah you have to sort of like mess around with the engine deck and everything to try and get the right level and. Yeah, I, I end up uh, scratch building the exhaust on it because they're non-existent. Yeah, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. um, Christopher said, uh, I did enjoy the wheel debate of 2018 when we were talking about the uh, yeah, wheel was... colours of the wheel well colours. Is that every Nathan... time we did a show, it was like, no, I found evidence it was this <laughs> colour. And it was literally, it went on for weeks. Yeah, no, honestly, don't <laughs> do it. It's not good. Nathan, I have the 32nd Tornado German Marine boxing. Is it the same kit as, kit as the new boxings of um, Rebel Tornadoes? Yes, it is. Sure, are you sure? There was like a really old one. Oh, yeah, they did a really, really old one, didn't they? Yeah, God. It might not. I'm not sure about that one. There is two versions of the Rebel 32 Tornado. I think we've never seen that old, old one once. Yeah. If it's in, I'll be good. I've got an F2. I'll get you the box. Just while you're doing that one, I can just do these. Uh, Phil, weathering armor, what's the difference between oil wash and flory wash? Flory wash is clay. So there's no chemicals in it. Mine is completely chemical free. Okay. That's the thing. Um, and you're saying I use both oil, flory and oil washes. Um, what do you use to thin your abtai lung oils? To be honest, I use like low odor uh, thinners, um, which are artist grade. That's the old De La Roni stuff. But to be honest with you, Tamiya's X20 enamel thinners, the blue top one, that's really good as well. No problems with that. The only thing I do say is keep away from is the harsh, cheap enamel thinners that perhaps you buy from the DIY store. Um, you know, because they're a little bit ropey and rough and you won't get the best out of your oils. That's the difference because I've tried it with crap stuff before and to be honest, it made a right mess. Um, but if you've got a nice mild, because these tend to be a lot milder, so they work a lot nicer and they're not as harsh as some of the cheaper ones. Sorry, mm. Nate, go on. If you've got a 32 Tornado in a box that's this shape, yeah. it's ancient. Yes. They did do an IDS in a similar shape box with this really old style colour scheme on it. Yeah. The newer one, oh dear, disappearing it, has always come in a bigger box. Yeah. Like that. And it's never had that weird grey colour scheme on it. But I haven't got the IDS version of this ancient thing. What this <laughs> thing? Oh gosh. Tell it's near five o'clock, look. Yeah. <laughs> time for tea it is <clears throat> right okay so what we'll do is we will call it here guys uh we will be back with you on monday at some point as we make our way through um so we would love to catch up with you as always i'd like to thank my esteemed colleagues down below andy keep well keep you know thank you Try lots of work for you tomorrow though clearly <laughs> <laughs> And Nathan, you're doing a fantastic job on the Tornado. Looking forward to the next part on that one as well. Yep. Don't forget, you can get the next part, which is part eight of this little beauty, which will be up with you or is up with you already. I put it up at lunchtime. So that one is up. If you want to go off and see that one, that one is up there. And as I say, Matt is getting me some bits and pieces sent down next week. So I have some reviews to do. We're going to do the Airfix um, Tiger Moth. I think some other stuff he's chucking in a box and we can get on with that one. But we're really enjoying ourselves. So I've got, if I just show them, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got anything to show guys, bring it out now and I'll put you on close up. But there we go. This little guy in squirrel. 
So he's done. So decals on there. I might add another four or five decals, but honestly, I'm not putting them all on because I, I can't be bothered. I'm not a martyr. <laughs> so yes, so anyway, he's doing all right. It's coming together very, very nicely down on there. So that's coming along. So hopefully by next week, he'll be finished off. We've got Nathan with the tornado. Yeah, so I have, I'm about five minutes short of part three. So I have fixed the intakes because it didn't go quite to plan because I've been rushing a bit. So the intakes are done. Rear part of the engine's done, but that, that's in the video. And today I've just done a little bit of work on bits, to be honest, fuel tanks and stuff that I'm not going to feature in the video build because there's nothing to tell really with the fuel tanks. But I will be showing you how to fix what's wrong with this bit. And this is off the hobby boss kit, so I'm going to do like a really early German tornado just with that underneath it. Very nice. Built that today as well. Very cool. Very nice indeed. Andy, show us your wares. And I've Here he finished, is. pretty much finished painting that, so I just need to uh, do a bit of a correction, shall we say. On Go the on then, side. show us your correction. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a correction there. Classic. That would be under the roundel. You could get away with yeah, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep a but, giant roundel over it. Nobody will notice. <laughs> and I used... That was the primer. Yeah. And I used that for the paint. Mm. And I made it to come off. Oh, I am as well. No, normally, both of those weld on pretty tight. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. Oh, well, never mind. These things do happen. Yeah. Right, thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe. A thumbs up would be absolutely fantastic as well because it just feeds our ego for no other reason, apparently. Uh, but we do enjoy it. We love doing these shows. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it as well. If so, tell all your friends and everything and we'll make a big party with us on Monday as we make our way through this terrible thing that's going around the world. Love to you, your family. Everyone keep safe. Wash your hands. Stay indoors. And we'll all get through with a lot of modelling as well. So that's really great. As always on a Friday, I'm going to leave you with your great work from the gallery. So until Monday, everybody, happy modelling. Take care. Bye. Say bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>